Hello everyone and welcome to Seraltos Live. Uh, I'm live today uh, primarily because I was too busy or maybe lazy to edit videos this week. Uh, I did a blog post and um, this this uh, live event kind of follows along that post. You can find it. I just published it about an hour ago, half an hour ago on seraltos.com if you'd like to take a look and follow along. Today is August 21st, 2001. If you're watching this after the 21st, it's no longer live. You're watching a recording. And if you're watching it before the 21st, you're a time traveler. So congratulations. Um, so this, this post or this, uh, this live event is on an issue one can face when trying to replace Windows AD with Azure AD. Uh, I just, like I said, I just released a post on that topic. <clears throat> Before we move on, if you use Azure AD domain services, I'm sorry if I said before, uh, this is trying to replace Windows AD with Azure AD domain services. Uh, I might have just said Azure AD. See, I can't go back and edit that in live events, so... Um, We'll just deal with that. So before we move on, if you are using Azure AD domain services now or in the past, I'd like to know uh, what your experience was with it, if it worked well, if not, if you ran into problems. Um, I've been sitting on this topic for a while. Uh, I typically pass along more informative or just, just raw information for people to help people understand Azure better. However, this this post is slightly opinionated. Um, it was formulated after seeing problems people were having with trying to replace Windows AD with Azure AD domain services. It's not quite a, a rant, but maybe a little bit of a tangent. I see people are joining. Hello, everyone. Um, this will be available too as a recording afterwards. So let's just talk a little bit about the difference between Azure AD domain services, Windows AD, and Azure AD. So um, there is confusion around those three. One of my most popular videos does go over the difference between those three. But at a high level, Azure AD domain services and Windows AD uh, support network-based authentication like Kerberos and NTLM, where Azure AD supports... Um, I've got it written down here because I knew I'd forget OAuth, SAML, and OpenID Connect. So they're really two different authentication mechanisms. Uh, Windows AD or Azure AD domain services is compatible with Windows AD. So that makes sense that somebody would try to, if you have a directive to get rid of domain controllers, that Azure AD domain services may be a solution. Uh, Based on the forums and social media posts that I follow, I've seen a lot of people uh, having issues. And typically the, the issue starts with, we want to get rid of on-premises domain controllers, or uh, I was given a directive that we no longer support Windows AD. So given that, that Azure AD domain services is compatible with Windows AD, it kind of makes sense that you would then go look at that as an option. However, Azure AD Domain Services is not intended as a replacement for Windows AD. Uh, before we go into what it was intended for, let's just go over some of the limitations. And I'm going to flip here. So we should have, uh, you should be able to see the screen. So there's a series of limitations with Azure AD Domain Services, and that's what I'm going to go over now. So to start, uh, there is no Azure uh, hybrid, <laughs> there's no hybrid Azure AD join. So this is a big deal for anybody looking as a solution for uh, Windows or, uh, sorry, Azure Virtual Desktop. And it's the reason why Windows 365 Enterprise, Microsoft's new remote or uh, virtual desktop platform, doesn't support Azure AD domain services. So you can join a client computer to Active Directory domain services, either Windows AD or Azure AD, or, uh, sorry, you can connect a client to Active Directory domain services, either Windows or Azure Active Directory domain services, or it can connect to Azure AD. 
For client computers joined to Windows AD, you can also use Azure AD Connect Sync to synchronize those identities from uh, Windows AD to Azure AD. Uh, but Azure AD Domain Services does not support Azure AD Connect Sync. So you can't hybrid join a machine that's joined to Azure AD Domain Services to Azure AD. So what does that mean? Well, that means it rules out uh, things like a conditional access policy that may allow, uh, you know, uh, bypass MFA if it's a Azure AD joined machine. It also rules out things like uh, universal print. So that's not available because those machines that are connected to the Azure AD domain services domain can't be hybrid joined. Uh, next, <clears throat> there's no enterprise or domain admin accounts. Instead, there's a group called AD, uh, AAD DC administrators. That's what's used to manage the um, Azure AD domain services uh, domain. Accounts in that group have like local uh, admin rights to member servers and uh, uh, any clients, but there's no true enterprise or domain admin account. And that takes us to the second or the next one, which is you can't use Active Directory certificate services. The first step in implementing Active Directory certificate services is sign in with an account that has enterprise admin rights. So that rules it out. And there's probably a lot of other applications that start that way as well that are ruled out. So this rules out any type of certificate-based uh, authentication or features such as smart card authentication. So that's not enabled or not an option with Azure AD domain services. Let's see, and the next one is you can extend the schema. Now this is, um, I couldn't think of any really good examples for this, but uh, there, are, there are a lot of third-party applications that may need an, a schema extended for Azure AD. That's not an option with a PaaS service. The next one, I actually chose my wording very carefully on this one because it's limited group policy support. So there's a default set of policies and admin templates that come with Azure ADDS. Uh, but because there's no, because this is a PaaS offering, you don't have access to log in to the domain controllers. There's no enterprise or domain admin account, so you can't access the sysval folder. So you can't upload those ADMX templates into the sysval folder for group policies. Now I said I choose my words wisely on this because there is some documentation that says you can add those ADMX templates to a the management workstation. Uh, I didn't actually go through and try that, but uh, that may be an option. Um, but it's just something to definitely be aware of that that may be limited. There's also a default policy uh, for account lockouts, uh, and that sets the password like the uh, password uh, 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 age to 90 days. You can't change that. You can add a more restrictive policy, but you can't change the default policy. So if you're in an environment that has like passwords that expire every 180 days, you would have to change that to 90 days. Uh, moving on, limited redundancy. So with Azure AD domain services, there's two domain controllers in one region. Uh, I'm sure it's a PaaS offering, so we can't really see what's going on, but I'm sure it's in a availability set or availability zones. But it's in one region. Um, back when I would deploy Windows AD, we always had to have the um, domain controllers uh, close to the users to process logins uh, for faster login processing. And also if a WAN connection went out, it wasn't uncommon to throw a domain controller on the site so it could process logins if there was a network issue. You can't do that with Azure AD, uh, Azure AD domain services. Uh, you're limited to just those two domain controllers. You can't, um, you can't add others. You can't connect them to anything else. So if a WAN connection goes down, for example, and people are logging in and wrote them a remote site, uh, that won't be, they won't be able to process their logins. Uh, the next one, is it's interesting. So when you set up an Azure AD domain services domain, it's a different domain name from Azure AD 
or any on-premises domain you may have. So, um, so users replicated from that Azure AD domain, uh, they get to keep their UPNs, but any user created that's that's originates in Azure AD domain services that will have a different UPN. So there could be confusion around that. There's also no forest trust, kind of. So with a user type Azure AD domain services domain, all the users are replicated from Azure AD or sourced within Azure AD domain services. Um, you can't set up a trust relationship outside of that domain. So as a standalone domain, that may not be that big of a deal, but down the road, if you ever are find yourself in merger and acquisition, uh, you may run into a problem because one of the first steps are typically or common is to set up a trust relationship with the other organization so you can start sharing resources. That won't be an option. There's no domain uh, or forest trust within a uh, user type. Now, Azure AD Domain Services has a new type of forest called a resource forest. The users aren't replicated from Azure AD to that resource forest. Uh, it's just for resources. So you can put computers out there and then set up a trust relationship with a Windows AD domain. And that processes the logins to access resources. But if your goal is to move away from Windows AD, a resource forest doesn't seem to make sense with that. It's also not publicly available. I've seen this question pop up a couple times. Now that I have Azure AD domain services, how do I connect my laptop to it? Maybe it's the one sitting at their desk. Well, it's not like Azure AD where it's exposed to the internet. Azure AD domain services, just like Windows AD, is on a private network. You don't want to expose that to the internet. So you would need any remote clients to have a VPN connection or express route connectivity into that Azure AD domain services domain. Let's see here. <clears throat> so what is it for? So you may ask the question at this point, what is it for? I mean, if it has all these limitations. Well, I put a paragraph here from the Microsoft documentation and a link back to it. But just to kind of summarize it, it lets you use uh, run legacy applications in the cloud that can't use modern authentication like Azure AD or when you don't want directory lookups to go back to your on-premises uh, Azure Windows AD environment. So it gives you a way to take these legacy applications that don't uh, support uh, SAML, OAuth, uh, OpenID Connect, they need a Kerberos or NTLM, and get them into Azure so you can take, uh, take advantage of some of the benefits like uh, scale sets or whatever to, to uh, implement it in Azure without exposing your Windows AD domain uh, to Azure. So one of the things that's missing from the description is the word client. Azure AD domain services isn't really there to support and manage client computers or client users. Um, that's why we see these limitations. So going back to what started all this with, uh, with that directive that some organizations get of, of, of uh, no longer supporting Windows AD or getting rid of domain controllers. My suggestion, if, if that's the route you wanna take, don't look at it as getting rid of Windows AD. Look at it as moving away from Kerberos or NTLM, the legacy applications. Because really what you're trying to do is get rid of, get rid of applications that require those older login. Uh, methods. So for example, uh, and this is easy to say, I know easy, it's much more difficult to do, but if you have uh, SMB file shares, instead of doing that, you can use OneDrive and SharePoint. So that would be a common, common move to get away from that underlying dependence on uh, NTLM and Kerberos. And then that will, that will move you towards modern authentication where you don't need either of them. Uh, I outlined a couple options. Uh, one, if you are just set, you have to get rid of Windows AD or domain controllers. 
um, and you still have to support that legacy and authentication for clients, um, you can use it, but just be aware of what those limitations are. And, um, and uh, be, uh, be mindful of the limitations and what you may need to do to move users off from Azure AD domain services onto a Windows AD domain when those limitations become uh, too restrictive. The other option is stay with Windows AD. So this seems pretty simple, but um, you can, uh, by moving Azure or Windows AD into Azure, you can do things like deploy multiple domain controllers in multiple regions. So you have higher availability. Um, let's see what else. Oh, and the cost. So it, US, the cost for uh, Windows AD domain services, last I checked, I think it was around $130 a month. You can do two fairly adequate domain controllers for the same price or pretty close to it. You do have to manage that yourself though. You, you have to patch and back up as your responsibility, but it really alleviates all those limitations. Plus, um, you can, in the future, if you need to, you have the option of extending that on-premises with a local domain controller. So if your organization grows and you need uh, to process logins faster, you can drop a domain controller uh, physically in an environment. Okay, so the summary is, you know, I'm not anti-Azure AD domain services. It has a role and it's really good for that. Uh, it's a tool just like anything else. But as you go in looking at that as an alternative to Windows AD, be aware of these limitations and how it might affect your organization now or into the future. So I'm gonna go look at the questions. So it says, uh, why wouldn't you use Azure AD for inter-domain trust? Uh, so Azure AD domain services doesn't support a trust relationship. Uh, so you can't do trust. And uh, I'm just gonna pause here. I know there's a time delay. So um, that actually brings me to the end. If you have any questions, I can try to answer them. Otherwise, I'll uh, just ramble maybe for a minute. Uh, thank everybody for joining me. I. Uh, um, I'm working on a new, a new studio. I moved from the basement to a different room in the house, so things are looking a little different. I'm still working on getting some of the, some of the layouts set up and stuff, but it's been, uh, it's been kind of interesting. All right, I'm not seeing anything and I have nothing else to ad lib. I'm pretty bad at that actually. So I am going to sign off and thank everybody for joining. I know this was a quick one. Um, I didn't want it to be too long, but thanks for watching and I'll have something posted shortly. Thanks.